What's going on, Ball and Glove loving Brewer fans? Welcome to Brew Crew Tuesday. I'm your host, Tyler. You can find me on Twitter at Tyler Kurth. Read my articles at Reviewing the Brew. You can also find my podcast by searching the YouTube channel here and hitting subscribe, looking for podcasts, or on any of your preferred listening platforms like Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, etc. Today, I am here to talk a little bit about some comments that Robert Murray made on Monday night. So he came out and said, hey, guess what world? Big earth shattering news here. The Brewers are listening to deals regarding Josh Hader. Oh, they'd have to be an idiot not to listen. So that is also really not that earth shattering once you think about it. (laughs) They've been listening for the last two years. Sure, I I think his trade value is pretty close to his peak right now guess what the brewers are going to continue to listen and they will make a move if and when things feel right so that's not what i want to spend today talking about because robert murray also indicated in this article that he came out with that the brewers are looking to add offense not shocking but they're going to look to do it from an area of strength by possibly trading away pitching, which was a really, really good area for the Milwaukee Brewers this last season, and it really normally hasn't been. But, man, they certainly have some promise in mainly the bullpen, especially, which which could make some very interesting trade pieces. So I'm going to break down some, not all the pitchers on the Brewers roster, into tiers. We're going to have the green tier. This means, hey, these guys, like, they could very well get traded. There's rumors surrounding them. They've got the stuff. There, there's reasons to trade these guys and get a return haul for them. We're then going to have the yellow tier where it's like, eh, I guess maybe it's 50-50. And then there's going to be the red tier where, like, no, these guys are untouchable. If you mention trading them, you're dead to me. That's that tier. So let's start in the green tier here. Obviously, Josh Hader falls in the green tier. Whether or not he should or should not be traded is not the point of this video. So stop looking at me like that. (laughs) It is more so of, yes, rumors are going to be out there. He very well could get traded. He is a hot topic this offseason. Also joining him in the green tier, I'm going to put Justin Topa. So you're probably like, what? Justin Topa? Yeah, I mean, he had one really bad appearance. I think his MLB debut, he kind of got pushed around a little bit. But after that, the dude was really good. Has a fastball in the high 90s, like 97, 98 most of the time. And his sinker, whew, low 80s. And that thing is knee buckling and possesses a lot of break. So for a 29-year-old, really only a two-pitch pitcher, he looks like he has some promise and the stuff to be really good out of the bullpen. And I'm going to kind of phrase this like how I did last year when the Brewers sent out Trent Grisham. You had this guy who you're like, okay, we, we think he's on the rise. We're not really sure what, you know, what his ceiling is. Let's trade him while his stock is at the highest. That's what I thought of Grisham at the time. This might be something you're looking at with Justin Topa, as well right now. Obviously, that didn't pan out with, with Trent Grisham. He had a phenomenal year with the Padres. But with Topa, could. I mean, it was a shortened season. Guys got not a lot of looks at him. But when he was out there, he looked good. So some team might be willing to trade for him. Hence him being in the green category for this. And then lastly, I'm going to put Drew Rasmussen in the green category as well here. Obviously, he brings the VLO. He has a ton of heat on that fastball, was a former first-round pick, ended up having Tommy John twice when he was in college. Brewers drafted him in the sixth round, was an absolute steal. He looked absolutely excellent this year coming out of the bullpen, but there is still the potential he could be a starting pitcher, so that could be very intriguing to another team out there looking to fill that need. Hence, Drew Rasmussen is in the green category or green tier here for me. Next, I'm going to bump down to the yellow tier, the meh 50-50 guys uh, here. So I'm going to put Adrian Hauser in the yellow tier. I'm going to put him in this tier mainly because I feel like the Brewers are still going to sell really high on Adrian Hauser if they ever wanted to trade him because he has got the stuff. He's got the stuff. That's that two-seamer 
moves a crap ton. And when he's right, he possesses really good, not really good, he possesses some pretty dang good swing and miss stuff. And then we just, we didn't really see it this year because he threw so many goddamn sinkers this year and all of a sudden was a contact pitcher. But if he can pitch and bounce back like we expect him to, he could be a very intriguing option for another ball club. But given he's still in pre-arbitration for one more year, and then he's got three more years of club control after that, I think the Brewers sell high on Adrian Hauser, which is going to put him in that middle tier because teams might not want to give up as much as the Brewers are wanting for him. Also in the yellow tier, I'm going to put Corey Knable, right? I mean, there's reason to consider trading him when he's making over $5 million and the Brewers need every penny they can get. So someone looking to add a veteran type-ish reliever with lots of closing experience and has been in clutch games, there could be a suitor out there for him. How the Brewers feel about Corey Knebel, I don't know. Obviously his velo started to come back last year after that stint on the IL with the hamstring injury, which may have attributed to that drop in velocity, and he's, he just started to look better. So you have to hope that they're, that he's going to bounce back. But again, at that price tag, do the Brewers look to move him? Maybe. That's why he is in this yellow tier. Also joining him in the yellow tier, I'm going to put Eric Yardley. Maybe. 30-year-old rookie for the Brewers. Had a really good season. I don't necessarily see there being a huge demand for a like submariner, low 80s, <laughs> mile-per-hour pitcher. Other than when you're with the Brewers, because Craig Council likes to mix, mix and match handedness and velocity, and he just kind of he really fits that mold. Will he be beneficial anywhere else? I I don't know. Maybe because he had a good season and was working his way up to high leverage spots. There's a chance, but I wouldn't bet on it. So we'll put him towards the bottom of this yellow tier. And then lastly, I'm going to put Angel Pardomo in the yellow tier. Prospect with just a huge ceiling. He's lefty. He's like 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, has really good life on the fastball, was striking batters out left and right in spring training, and just never really got his footing down when summer camp 2.0 came around. And it just it wasn't meant to be. He struggled with command and his very limited MLB experience this year. It just looked too amped up and wasn't quite ready for the moment. But you can see the potential there with him, which could make him an intriguing candidate for another team. And then lastly here, we're doing the red tier. So these guys are untouchable. Devin Williams, Brandon Woodruff, Corbin Burns, three locks for sure. They are not being traded. They are not, the Brewers will not even listen to those things. I do not think they, they really shouldn't. And I'm even going to put Freddie Peralta in this group mainly because the Brewers just locked him up to an extension this last spring, five years, and they're only giving him like $3 million a year. You like, yeah, it'd be asinine to get rid of someone like that at such a budget, budget price when he can give you so much. Is he going to be a starter? We don't know. Is he going to remain a lever? I don't know. Either way, I think – all five years that we have him locked up, he's on this team and he's contributing somewhere. What his role is, we just don't know at this point. So do the Brewers look to trade any of these guys for offensive pieces? A third baseman? A first baseman? Maybe. Do they look to trade some of these pitching prospects with a hitter? I, I think so. Avi Garcia comes to mind. I mean, that guy's going to be making $10 million this year. And was he worth that price tag last year? No. Is he when he's fully healthy and at his best? Maybe. I don't know. But if you could package Avisil Garcia and a pitching prospect or two and bring in an infielder and maybe replenish a pitching arm, I think that's a really good deal for the Brewers because you're going to be shedding that salary. And if you get two other guys, all of a sudden, hmm. Now you could go out and sign another first baseman or, you know, wherever the Brewers decide to use that extra money and allocate those resources. I think that trade could be could be really interesting if it would ever get pulled off. Also, Brewers could package Orlando Arcia with one of these pitching prospects maybe as well. So 
I think those are the two guys that I would look to be packaged with any of the pitching choices that I mentioned, especially those guys in the green tier, as I mentioned already. So let me know your thoughts on the tiers. Do you think any of these guys are going to be traded? Uh, drop your drop your thoughts in the comments below here. Hit subscribe, and we'll be back next Tuesday with Brew Crew Tuesday again. Thank you.